Hi there, so now it's time to do the Wellculator assessment. Hopefully you filled in the physical assessment sheet and you also kept a food journal or food diary for at least three days. Now the reason why keeping a food journal or diary is so helpful is because our lives are so busy that by Thursday we've often forgotten what we ate on Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning. So instead of avoiding the snack or meal amnesia, keeping a record for a couple of days can really help you to be objective when you answer the questions. What I'd like you to do is use your food diary when you're asked the, the questions on the Wellculator that relate to it. For instance, if there's a question about how much water you drink or how many fruits you eat per day, take a look at the average on your food journal and diary and use that to then answer yes or no to each question. So on that note, make sure that you've printed out the Wellculator sheet so that it's easy for you to mark down your score. Grab a pen or a pencil and I'm going to work through each of the 10 questions with you so that you know exactly what I mean and how to answer yes or no to each question so that at the end you'll have a score out of 10. So when I ask the questions, answer yes if you're doing that particular activity more than 80% of the time. You don't need to be doing it all the time because we know that nutrition doesn't have to be 100%. It's not about perfect lifestyle and perfect health. It's more about optimizing our lifestyles and optimizing our health. You ready? First question. Do you graze or do you gorge? Which means do you eat light and eat often? You should be eating every two or three hours on the right things. Second question, do you manage your portion sizes and do you eat balanced meals? Now a balanced meal on a plate means that you've got a variety of the different food groups to ensure that you have the correct nutrients. What that means is a balanced meal should ideally be made up of a lot of colour coming from Mother Nature, so vegetable, salad or fruit, then a low GI or high fibre source of starch or carbohydrate, and then some protein that is ideally lean or low fat, and then one healthy fat added to that meal. What this means in terms of kilojoules and calories, a light meal or a meal that is perfectly portioned, especially if you're trying to manage your weight, should be less than 2,000 kilojoules, that means less than 500 calories, and shouldn't provide more than 15 grams of fat. So ideally, less than 15 grams of fat. This would be a balanced, healthy meal that is providing the correct portion sizes. Third question, do you start your day off with a balanced breakfast within two hours of waking? Now, if you're struggling to answer this question, chances are you're not having a balanced breakfast within two hours of waking. What is a balanced breakfast? Briefly, ideally a balanced breakfast should contain some kind of fruit or perhaps vegetables, then a low GI starch that would give you an extra boost of fiber, and it's really balanced if you're adding a lean protein or some dairy to that. Here is a perfect example. There's a plum for some fruit, a granola cake that's made with a high fiber cereal, and then some protein coming from the low fat yogurt. Or perhaps a balanced smoothie using lots of fresh fruit and then some dairy or perhaps a protein supplement in that. Fourth question. Do you have enough color in your diet? So do you uh, eat enough fruits, vegetables and salads? A minimum would be five servings of these foods. Are you adequately hydrated? The fifth question, do you drink enough water to stay adequately hydrated? Now enough water would be approximately one glass for every 10 kilograms that you weigh. So one glass would be 250 milliliters per 10 kilograms that you weigh. If you think of your weight in terms of pounds, then 10 kilograms equals about 20 pounds. So that would be one glass for every 20 pounds that you weigh. Keep in mind that if you're drinking herbal tea or flavored teas without adding extra sugar and honey and milk, that will also count as part of your water or kilojoule fluid intake. Sixth question, do you think about the other beverages that you drink? So are you careful about uh, beverages that contain caffeine and stimulants? Do you know how many to have? Are you careful about fruit juice and cold drinks that contain kilojoules, calories and sugar? Do you think about the alcoholic beverages that you drink and manage those? And the seventh question is, are you fat smart? So do you reduce the harmful or saturated fats 
that we get and do you make sure that you take in the right fats as well as the essential fatty acids and on that note if you are using any supplements like vitamins or minerals are you making an informed choice so have you spoken to somebody who's asked you about your personal lifestyle and then given you recommendations on what to use because there's a lot of supplements out there and just because they're available or because they're healthy or natural doesn't actually mean that they are healthy for all of us then the eighth question is are you happy with your weight or actually do you have a healthy weight so what is a healthy weight because you can't just use your tight jeans as a guide well a general measurement that a lot of health professionals use is called the body mass index or in short BMI now if you had the assessment form with you you would have calculated your BMI a reminder about how to do that is to take your height and square that and then divide that value into your weight in kilograms. So the body mass index is your weight in kilograms divided by your height squared. Remember to square your height in meters, otherwise you're not going to get the correct value. You'll then get a value and you'll fall into one of these categories. If that value is less than 19, you'll be regarded as underweight, which is also not healthy. Ideally, you want your BMI body mass index value to be somewhere between 18 and a half and less than 25. That would categorize you as normal weight for your height. If your BMI value is above 25 but less than 30, you'd be categorized as overweight. And if your BMI value is over 30, you'd then be categorized in the obese category. Now, I know that a lot of us don't like that word. What's also important to realize is that the BMI isn't appropriate for everybody. If you do a lot of physical activity and you have a high muscle mass, then your BMI may appear to be high, but your body composition is not incorrect or unhealthy because you have high muscle mass. But for generally most of us, this formula will definitely work and give us an idea of if we're at our ideal weight. Now, if you're not at your ideal weight and you'd like to know what you should be weighing, take a BMI of 25 to start off with and then multiply that by your height in meters squared. And that will give you the upper range of what you should be weighing. If you really want to be ideal, then ideally you want to fall into the normal weight category. So choose a BMI of say 23 or 22 and then multiply that by your height in meters but remember to square that value and then you'll then get your ideal weight in kilograms. Keep in mind though, what the scale does not tell you is what your body is made up of. It just gives you an indication of your total weight. Ideally, you want to know what is happening inside your body. So getting your body fat percentage calculated and your lean muscle mass percentage is quite important. You can do this with most health professionals. Uh, such as a biokineticist or a dietitian, or a lot of personal trainers offer the service at any gym. Then knowing where your body fat sits on your body is critical because if your weight is sitting around your tummy, this can also place you at risk of certain lifestyle diseases such as heart disease or diabetes. Now the question is, do you exercise enough and do you practice the art of correct breathing? Now enough exercise would be on average half an hour or so a day, especially if you're quite sedentary and spending a lot of time sitting behind your computer or at a desk. And deep breathing involves uh, using your whole diaphragm and your whole belly in order to get enough breath. And then the last question is, are you a non-smoker and do you screen your health? So do you know your health numbers? So there are things that are really basic that all of us should know, things like our cholesterol value, our blood sugar, our blood pressure and then your waist circumference. So what is your score? How many yeses did you get? Now the ideal score would be eight or more yeses but if you're average then your score is probably three. Now keep in mind that these 10 questions are not really rocket science. Sure you may not know everything about reading food labels or understanding supplements or knowing exactly about kilojoules but Generally, these 10 questions are about basic lifestyle habits that a lot of us know about. So the question is, well, why aren't all of us having eight or more yeses? And on that note, if you did have a high score, it would still be a great idea for you to listen 
to the video clips and watch and read the, the one page summaries just in case you pick up some tips and hints about how you could even do things easier and smarter to help you while you're on the run. And if your score is 3 out of 10, you need to set yourself up for success by only making one change at a time. And that is why the Wellculator program is designed around working through these 10 questions to help you increase your score. Now, when you want to change a habit, most of us need quite a bit of time to do that. And a lot of the experts say that we should be doing something consecutively every day for about a month in order for it to become part of our lifestyle and for it to become a habit. Now, I didn't want this program to be stretched out over 10 months or a year. So what I've done is each week we will focus on one of these questions. But remember, if you want to set yourself up for success, you need to be making smaller changes and being consistent rather than being extreme. So if your score is 3 out of 10, don't go and jump to 10 out of 10 first thing on Monday morning. Rather, pick one aspect that you'd like to change and focus on creating a new habit around that. So here's to creating new habits using the Wellculator as a guide. I look so forward to connecting with you over the next 10 to 11 weeks, where each week you can expect to get uh, at least two video clips on the particular question, along with some practical videos, as well as summarized sheets. And at any time, feel free to communicate with me. You're welcome to access my blog to communicate with the Wellculator community on Facebook and let's help you to boost your energy, to improve your health and to lose weight.